Hello everybody, today is the anniversary of the birth in 1857 of Edward Elgar. He's responsible for a lot of well-known music like the Nimrod um, part of the Enigma Variations or the um, Pomp and Circumstance marches that played at the last night of the proms. But he also wrote a piece called The Kingdom, which was an oratorio, um, the second in a, in a series of three that he intended to write, um, about the uh, early disciples. And this particular one, The Kingdom, uh, is about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it contains a lot of t very typical Elgar music, but the actual music that describes the coming of the Spirit uh, is disturbing, it's, it's loud, uh, it's piercing, it um, tries to describe the, the, the tumultuous effect of that uh, extraordinary incident on the first day of Pentecost. <laughs> The um, singing of the mezzo-soprano it, it it was a, a wee bit piercing for some and the music may have felt a bit discordant. But the point of it was to try and, 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 and convey the, the extraordinary nature of the Pentecost experience. Uh, the disturbance that Edward Elgar felt, however, was not uh, the positive disturbance of the spirit, but the, um, the, the pain of... of a real struggle with his faith. Um, I mean, just finishing the work, the kingdom, was uh, something that he, he gave up on it twice, uh, but his wife encouraged him to work through until he'd finished it. He did have a struggle with his, his mental health. Uh, and then his, uh, a, a very close friend of his died in 1909, and then came the First World War. Uh, uh, and, and it appears that his, uh, the Catholic faith in which he, he grew up gradually disappeared uh, and, and as he moved towards the end of his life he didn't really believe and certainly didn't compose the third part of the trilogy that he had originally intended. And so today uh, I think it's something worth thinking about to um, just bear in mind the struggle of people who find faith really, really difficult and perhaps eventually lose it. You indeed may be one of them having that struggle. In fact, I think we all do at some point in our lives. Um, and and uh, it might be slightly reassuring to be reminded that one of the works that the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is described as uh, achieving in, in the scriptures is, is that the Holy Spirit is there to, to help us, and to nurture us, and to give us strength and support, even when our own faith seems to be insignificant or disappearing. Um, Paul talks about uh, looking around at the world and, and it feels like it's groaning in pain. Uh, and yet even in a situation like that, the Holy Spirit comes to us to help us to find some understanding and some hope and some indeed in some way of praying about it. Uh, it's in Romans 8. And so I think um, it's worth today uh, just those of us who feel that prayer could help to to pray for people whose faith is a real struggle, pray for people who've lost their faith but wish they hadn't. People who, like Elgar um, faced what was going on in the world around them and couldn't square their faith with it. And let's hope that uh, for, for those who, who are in that situation, the Spirit uh, may provide some kind of support and some kind of encouragement uh, and help all of us to find uh, as we face up the, to the realities of our world that God's Spirit is there to support us and strengthen us through it.